Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by one of the co-hosts of the Bloomberg Surveillance Podcast, third prize winner of the North Dakota Newspaper Association 2002 Contest for Government Reporting. We welcome Lisa Abramowitz. Sean Dillon, hi. Thank you for having me. I'm laughing here. I apologize. I'm laughing that you mentioned the North Dakota uh, Award. That was one of my first jobs out in North Dakota and had nothing to do with finance. And it's a far cry from uh, what we do every day on Bloomberg Surveillance, but definitely underpinned uh, a lot of, of the humanity, frankly, of markets. Lisa, let's go beyond the mic. Bloomberg Surveillance has over 2,000 episodes in the can. What makes Tom, John, you work so well together. I think that we're all incredibly different, but incredibly passionate about what we do. And we like to do it uh, with humor as well as the intensity that markets bring every day. And it's all improv. We wake up and the show changes as the news changes of the day. And I think that with, with, Tom, John, and myself, and we're on every morning from 6 to 9 a.m. together, Eastern Time. One thing that we do is we know what makes the other people tick. We know what they're going to pick out and be interested in, and it's going to be slightly different than what we are. And there's a tension there uh, in terms of the different takes on issues like inflation, like gas prices, like where the market's going to go that really create a, a certain energy. And, and besides which, I just like them. They're, they're fun people and uh, they are incredibly intelligent. What's the one story that people aren't talking about that concerns you in the financial markets right now? Well, if you talk to uh, big leaders of global organizations, they point to the food crisis that is developing in the Black Sea, where 98% of Ukraine's wheat exports uh, pass through. It's being blocked off by Russia right now. And that will lead to shortages of wheat, particularly in certain African uh, nations as well as throughout the world that uh, derive most of their wheat and other agricultural products from Ukraine. And the reason why this matters is not only because of the people who might not have enough to eat, but because if you start seeing basic staples cost that much more, you're going to start to see real social pressures that will lead to some unexpected events in a lot of places. And, and I think that people point to the Arab Spring, for example, and how that was sort of the, one of the precursors to that whole movement. Um, that's one area that a lot of people talk to in the forefront, though. I mean, honestly, it's all about inflation. It's about going to the gas station and seeing $5, $6, how quickly it's moving, and a feeling that something has changed from what we've seen over the past decade or two. Lisa, you're a mom to a 13 and a 10-year-old. How well do they understand finances? Or do they just blow mom right off? It's like, mom, stop Stop talking money. (laughs) So I have a a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old, two boys. And I used to practice on them when they were probably like six or seven years ago. I used to practice explaining things to them when I was a columnist still to see if they would understand it and if I could describe it in a way that they could understand. And if I couldn't, I knew it was on me. I figured that that was on me for not being able to describe it right. And it helped hone my ideas in terms of how to explain something in a way that anyone could understand. And I know that that sounds almost not, it sounds almost simplistic, but it helps me understand better when I explain it to them. And my 13 year old's big into debate and he's very interested in all of this stuff. And he does more research on cryptocurrencies than I ever would. And and he's very intrigued And my 10 year old, a little bit less so, but I, I do, I do practice on them and they, have varying degrees of appreciation. <laughs> Co-host of the Bloomberg Surveillance Podcast, Lisa Abramowitz joins us beyond the mic. Time for the Rocky Nate. Eight random questions answered with the first thing that comes to your mind, Lisa. There is no pressure. Favorite place to go on the University of Chicago campus? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I would say probably, wow, the quads. I mean, just the the big grassy area in, in the main uh, heart of campus, especially in the springtime when it's not really windy and freezing. Where's the best place in New York City to think? Central Park. How about the one thing you don't miss about Fargo? My car dying after it was negative 30 degrees without wind chill for a full month and having to walk back and forth from my apartment to the office wearing what people called my walking sleeping bag. Who was the first mentor in your life? 
My father. If you could explain one complex finance concept, but had to do it to a kindergarten class, could you do it? Well, I did it with my, with my, at the time, six-year-old. I explained money to him. And I explained the idea of if you ran an apple orchard and you needed a pair of shoes, would you bring, you know, five barrels of apples over to the shoemaker to give him the apples for the shoes? It would be kind of inefficient. You know, how do you create a way where you can kind of have IOUs in, in some kind of way that that was a little bit less cumbersome? And we we discussed that. And then I found out later that the barter system actually has never been identified in history. <laughs> that Usually, if you look at money, it's much more complicated. It goes way back. But it was nice to try. And it made him understand the concept a little bit more. What was the first thing you saved up for? Wow. I saved up for... A used car when I got to Fargo. The one that died in Fargo? The one one that died. (laughs) Correct. Thank you. Thanks for putting that together. (laughs) Who told the best stories growing up? Wow, that's a great question. Who told the best stories? Hmm. My brother. (laughs) I never knew whether I could trust him. (laughs) Now, are you more of a homebody or a person around town? Um, It's a good question because I feel like I'm always in transit. I am a bit of both. Who's the one person in your industry that you would love to have five minutes just to pick their brain? Terry Gross. It's time for one big question with Lisa Abramowitz. Beyond the mic, Lisa, with the pandemic changing the way business has been conducted, with all these outside influences and pressures, will the U.S. face a severe recession within the next 18 months? (laughs) If I could answer that, I would probably be in a different position. Best guess. If I go to the consensus right now, I'll tell you what the consensus is. It's that there's a very narrow path to avoiding recession, and it's possible It sort of is a when question. 2023, mm, by the end, it's looking more likely that there could be some sort of downturn. 2024, possibly even more so. But a lot of it depends on whether we see some of the inflationary pressures abate or not. She could never trust what her brother says. Hates her used (laughs) car in Fargo because it died. You can see her on Bloomberg or hear her podcast, Bloomberg Surveillance, with our partners Tom and John wherever you can find podcasts. We thank Lisa Abramowitz for taking the time to talk with us today. (laughs) That was great. Thank you. And that, my friends, is a Beyond the Mic shortcut.